We are ranking the top 25 backwards in the country here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel. At number 15, uh, the Tennessee Volunteers check in in our consensus. We were a little bit split. Riley, um, on how well this Tennessee backcourt projects for next season. You had them 22nd in your personal rankings. I had them 11th, so 15 is kind of right smack in the middle. We've decided that there are really four four guards on this roster, not counting wings, not counting frontcourt players. Four guards, Sakai Ziegler, Chaz Lanier, Jordan Ganey, Bishop Boswell. So those are the four guys we're going to be talking about for, for this backcourt. Riley, you had them 22nd. I had them 11th. So there's obviously some difference of opinion in terms of how good this group is. For you, what went into the, the 22nd ranking? Yeah, I think any Tennessee fans who've tuned into the channel all summer know that I've I've sort of branded myself as the Chaz Lanier believer. Like I've been the guy, and that's mainly uh, – it's been a byproduct partly because it's been me debating Greg on it, who's more of the linear skeptic. But even I have to acknowledge like banking on him to – even get close to last year's productions, but I, I don't think anybody really expects that, you know, coming up from, uh, from the a sun and to this year, like, I, again, it was, a, it wasn't just a blip. He, he had three years of college production that was nowhere near to the, what we saw last year from a scoring output, from a efficiency standpoint. And now he moves up to the sec. I mean, I believe in his athleticism. I think he figured something out. He has good size, but, uh, definitely some of the risk of relying on an up transfer to be one of your top offensive creators, someone who is going to be tasked with doing a lot off the bounce and making plays for others. That's the only thing that gave me a little pause here. I mean, Ziegler's solid. I don't know if we're going to see him, you know, exceed much of his production. He's sort of seems like he's closer to his ceiling. Um, Ganey should be better in year two, but yeah, I would say, uh, my ranking was based more on depth. I don't know if there's quite mm -hmm. the star power here, which I think by nature had me a little bit lower on them. That That's valid. I'm bullish on, um, like, leave Lanier out of it. I think Lanier is going to be awesome. But I'm bullish on what uh, Jordan Ganey and particularly Sakai Ziegler can do this season. Like, I think both those guys are in for big improvements, and there's some projection from that uh, on my end. But that's, that's what we do. That's what we do here in the offseason. Uh, I'm high on what they can do. So we'll start with Chaz Lanier because he is the headliner, obviously coming over from North Florida. Um, he has to be the top-end talent, right, on, on this roster. That's what he was brought in to do. Yeah, I think he you want him to be the leading scorer out of this group. I don't think he necessarily has to be the team's leading scorer, because you have Darlene Stone Dubar, you have Igor Milicic. Uh, both of those guys are proven scorers at this level. I know Milicic is more of a front-court player who depends on you know teammates to get himself involved a little bit, whereas Dubar would be... Uh, I guess if you want to squint your eyes and say maybe he can be diet connect, that's the hope. Uh, so, you know, he I, I think he probably edges Lanier for the leading scorer. But, yeah, you want I mean, you need Lanier to be the, the alpha in the backcourt for sure. He's certainly got to be one of the top end talents, right? If he ends up being a depth piece for you, whether he's, you know, the fourth guy in the offense of the starting lineup or one of the top guys off the bench, uh, chances are that's not a great sign for Tennessee this season. So I think he's going to be one of the top end guys. Ziegler to me is somebody who throughout his college career has floated between being a depth piece and being a top end talent going into this season, which is going to now be his senior season. Do you see him more as a depth piece for this group or, or as one of those top end guys? I mean, I think he's definitely more than a depth piece because I'd be surprised if he doesn't start. I mean, I guess last year, Tennessee experimented with him coming off the bench and maybe there's a world where, you know, Lanier and Ganey, or maybe you you want to squeeze Cam Carr in there. We're considering him as a wing for this exercise, just for any Tennessee fans um, curious about that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty tough to envision Ziegler coming off the bench again. And I, he's a really solid starter. You know, he's the defensive mm -hmm. bulldog. He's a good table setter, and he's played a ton of college basketball games for some great teams. So yeah, I, even though I don't think of him as like top end talent, he's someone who I think most teams would like to have. Yeah, I, I guess so. He's in the middle there, right? As, as a starter, which way does he lean more towards? Is he more like a supporting cast, or is he more the guy who's driving the boat? I definitely see him more as like the supporting cast. Okay, but so yeah, I, I'm I, guessing you're you're the opposite there. I think I think we see him shift more into driving the boat because he kind of hmm. did that last year. Now, now Connect was the guy, right? Connect was the guy last year, but when Tennessee went on their run uh, in February and into March, Ziegler elevated his game 
to another level. They needed a, a secondary scoring option next to connect for them to kind of break through. They went through a little slump uh, in January. It was about two weeks. It wasn't, wasn't big. They came out of that with Ziegler being the clear number two offensive option in most cases. I think, he, I think he kind of carries it over. Like he's a senior now, right? He understands the offense. There are questions about uh, Lanier and Dubar up transferring, if they could produce consistently offensively against the SEC competition. We know Ziegler can, we know Ziegler um, certainly has the experience and the keys are kind of in his hand as a lead guard. We'll see what happens. Cause again, he's, he's shifted, I think with both being a, being a supporting piece and more of a main guy. I, I hope we see the consistency now in a senior season of him being more of the main guy. Ralph, I feel like you're dying to drop a split of like Zakai Ziegler's stats after February or in February. It was in a Ralph report that was up on HXCBB.com. He was a feature <laughs> of one, uh, but I, I was not able to go back and find it in time. Do you, remember, do you have like an estimate off the top of your head? How much, how, because like even just looking at his box scores, he definitely did up his scoring output starting against Kentucky February 3rd, 26 points that game. Oh, yeah. 13 assists, too. I mean, honestly, an insane stat line. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh on him saying he's just a supporting cast. There's not many guys in the country who could, and I know you can caveat it by saying that Tennessee, or excuse me, the Kentucky defense was terrible, but there are very few guards in the country, I think, who are capable of giving you a 26 and 13 stat line. Down the stretch of last season, he was awesome. So here's the here's the split. I was able to find the I was able to find my my graph that I made. Um, so November through the end of January, uh, there were 20 games played. He averaged 9.8 points per game and five assists, but was shooting 38% from the field, 32.7% from three. February through March 8th, which is when I, I made this. So all through February, then the first part of March, I think leading up to the SEC tournament, 10 games, Tennessee went nine and one in those 10 games. He upped his scoring average from 9.8 to 14.8 points per game. So assists went from five per, per game to 7.6 per game. Turnovers went down. His shooting from the field went up to 43.7%. His three-point shooting went from 32.7 to 39.7 percent like he was awesome down the stretch of last season i think we see that carry over this is projection from me um mm -hmm. but i really really liked what i saw down the stretch from him uh, i thought that was good to see now jordan ganey early in the season looked like he was going to be more of that guy to provide some offense with connect he kind of faded down the stretch rough shooting numbers he's a better shooter than i think he showed last season is he on the roster for depth or could he carve out as something of a starting role on this team? Yeah, I think again, like Lanier would sort of have to be a bust for him to crack the lineup because, you know, Ziggler's going to start. Uh, I'm penciling Dubar in at the three. At the same time, I think he's a really high quality six or seventh man. Um, I can't shake like how good he was at the start of the season. I always go back to that Michigan State game, um, that exhibition where he was just lights out and looked like looked every every bit the part of an SEC caliber guard. And if, if I can get on my Kevin Sweeney here, when <laughs> talking to some big South coaches, you know, like you and I both contributed to the Almanac the past two years that allowed me to build some relationships there. It was, I mean, just kind of pulled some of those coaches going into the season and it was rave reviews all around for Ganey with his size and athleticism. I think he's, mm -hmm. you know, you think about those mid, mid major guards, particularly the big South. It's like a borderline low major league, uh, you generally associate that with smaller guards, skinnier guards who can't quite cut it at the high major level. And Ganey is on the, the slimmer side, but he's got good sides. I think he's like a legit 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 long wingspan, um, led the Big South in steals when he was there. You see why Rick Barnes kind of gravitated to him, and I know his dad's on the staff as well. So um, he's someone who I buy having a, a sizable role, probably off the bench. But yeah, I like it. I, I think he's a really, really quality bench guard. I agree. I think I think he comes in off the bench but plays a, a significant role. I think he's been passed over by Lanier Dubar. Meshack's going to have a role, certainly. Uh, Jemai Meshack, who we are considering as a wing for this, and so that's why he's not included in the backcourt conversation as well. I think he is kind of passed over in that, but as a, as a seventh or eighth guy off the, like, you know, second or third guy off the bench, he's one of the best seventh or eighth guys in the country. I think for me, or it certainly has mm -hmm. that potential. I think we saw some of the ups and downs of the, just the grind of an SEC season on, on somebody who's not used to it. I expect him to be more ready physically and, and mentally this season, his second go around with the volunteers. Last guy's Bishop Boswell, a highly regarded freshman four-star number 69. Nice 
overall uh, on the on through recruiting rankings. What are you expecting from him? Probably not a ton of playing time in year one, but he's a I mean a good multi year piece provided they can keep him out of the portal. And, you know, Barnes has had a ton of success recruiting Charlotte and the surrounding areas. He's out of Myers Park High School. Big tough guard, kind of has all the intangible cliche stuff you want to say about him. Good defender as well, to where you see why Barnes gravitated to him. Um, yeah, I, I could see like UT fans just gassing up the potential of a uh, of heat both him and Cam Carr if they stick around for the future. You know, you kind of have your scoring with Carr and your your defense playmaking with Boswell. But yeah, I wouldn't expect to see a ton of him on the court this year. Yeah, I think you might get some minutes with him at the back end of the rotation, but they'll just be spot minutes. He is more of a play, I think, for next year because all the guys we've brought up, Ziegler, Lanier, Ganey, uh, you can even go into Meshack, who's not mentioned, uh, Dubar, again, who's not part of this. All those guys are seniors or fifth years. Like, there's there's going to be a hole there next year. Boswell's, Boswell's chance will come. I think his minutes may be few and far between this season, but he may be a consistent back end of the rotation guy. So who is who? who the top guys are, are Lanier and Ziegler. I think it's pretty clear. Do you think Ganey cracks that cracks that mold? No, I, I would say again, you're looking at some combination of Meshack and Dubar on the wing. Um, then take your big man of choice, whether that's Milicic, whether it's Estrella. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd say Ganey's probably the first guard off the bench. Yeah. What's this group's biggest strength? Because we, we've talked about these four, and there's some varying skill sets there. But as a collective, what do you think their biggest strength is going to be this season? I think you hit on it with the the varying streaks with like the versatility where there's good roles here where Ziegler's have been pretty much been the tone setter defensively since his freshman year. Like remember when he came out of nowhere as a three star recruit who was just yes. pounding opposing ball handlers, really good passer as well. I mean, you mentioned those assist splats, uh, <laughs> assist Splat. splits, <laughs> assist <laughs> splits down the stretch of the season of seven a game. Um, you know, Lanier's the pure bucket, good athleticism. Ganey is the three and D prototype. He's just got to get that percentage, those percentages up a little bit. Then you have Boswell, who is the the long term piece. Although, like, I mean, Boswell's tape is really good. Some of the passes he threw, like he's definitely has that flat, the flashy passing, passing badge, so to speak. Played for CP three on the uh, EYBL circuit, which is you know produced some good players. So yeah, yeah, I, I like how there's a bunch of different archetypes that this team can hit in their backcourt. I think that that's certainly a strength. The one I had down um, was generating turnovers, more specifically coming up with steals. Defense is not like what you consider the calling card for all four of these guys, but you mentioned Ziegler leading the charge and kind of being the head of the snake of Tennessee's defense. He is that. Lanier is a guy who came up with a number of steals uh, his time on North Florida. We'll see if that translates. Jordan Ganey, same way, was one of the best steal guys. Um, at USC Upstate before going to, to Tennessee last season. He still averaged about a steal a game despite varying minutes. Uh, and Boswell has a lot of defensive upside, particularly with coming up with steals. And then if you're looking for a overall strength, that's going to be the main one. Um, playmaking, I, I think, is there too. That there, There's some question marks there, which will, I, I think, is one of the major questions facing this group, is not the major question facing this group. What do you think the major question that, that this group has to answer for Tennessee to be successful. I mean, it's got to be Lanier. You know, it's that question yeah. that Greg has brought it up in every video we've done about him. Was last year just a blip? Was it a fluke that he stumbled into 20 points per game? I mean, that would be an insane fluke, but it is hard to discount it completely just when you look at who, the player he was the previous three seasons. Um, how does that translate up a level? Can he... Uh, can he have success the way that we've seen some up transfers do under Barnes in these these past few years? Yeah, I, I had Lanier as well, but more about him being able to be an elite scorer. Or can Ziegler pick up the slack there? Because that's the big question with this team, and everybody's trying to figure out how they can replace Dalton Connect. But this team, this was a very good program before Connect got there, right under Rick Barnes. Connect showed like what an offensive a dynamic offensive player can be. They don't need or, or can carry this team to be. They don't need one guy to do all of that, but I do think they need more offense than they had reconnect, right? They need more of those dynamic playmakers. I think Lanier can be that. I think Ziegler can be that. Ganey can be that from the perimeter, mostly in catch and shoot, catch and shoot situations. Excuse me. I need to see all those guys step up and fill their roles offensively while maintaining their defensive intensity. 
they can do that, Tennessee can win the SEC, go to the Final Four, repeat last year's Elite Eight run, right? Uh, mm-hmm. If not, then there are some some major major questions about this team. Let's get into projecting some numbers here, the production uh, for all four of these guys. Uh, we'll start with start with Ziegler. What kind of season do you see him having? Uh, I said he'll average. 10 and six, but after you get hit me with the splits, I feel like that's on the low end. So maybe I should bump that up to 13 and six. 10 and six was his bad splits last season. I next know. to connect. I know that was disrespectful. I'm going 15 and seven with wow. two and a half with two steals. I think he's going to be awesome this season. Part of it too. I think the points, I don't think Lanier is going to be like a superstar, but I think he's going to average like 14 and a half, three boards, um and shoot 45 percent from the field and like 38 from three 14 and three was my exact projection for Lanier so we're in lockstep on that one boom we both have said we expect Jordan Ganey to have a bigger role what does that look like I had Ganey at eight points per game um probably closer to 36 percent from three yeah see he this is a tough one because he averaged 6.8 last season in 18 minutes per game and he shot 29 percent from three right even if you don't expect him to see a huge uptick in minutes, which I think there will be some, I think his shooting percentage will go up a pretty good bit. So I, I think he's going to average about nine per game. Won't debate you on that. Shoot again around 38% from three, 10% increase. I think that's kind of the sweet spot for him there. Uh, and then Bishop Boswell, the freshman. I just had two points per game. But again, like if you watch his high school tape, there's a world where he commands a role unexpectedly. But yeah, I think, just going to be tough for him to get the minutes. Yeah, I'm with you. When he when he comes in, it's going to be defensive focused, I think, certainly. All right, so now the main question with backcourt, we're, we're closing with this for every backcourt because we all know how much guards matter in college basketball, particularly in March. And they matter because of the fact they have the ball in their hands late in the game. So, Riley... Who is the one for Tennessee who's got the ball in his hands late in the game when they need a play to be made? You sold me on Ziggler. I want to go with Lanier, but I, I anecdotally speaking, Ziggler's had some clutch moments so far, if I'm not mistaken. He has, and I think he's he is by far the best playmaker on this team. So if you want somebody who can make a shot off the bounce or know when to hit an open guy and create something for Lanier, uh, for Darlings and Dubar, for Jordan Ganey in spot-up situations – like he's the best of both worlds for that. So for me, it's Kai Ziegler, which all this talk about Lanier and Dubar this off season. I think this might be Ziegler's team this season. It's that time cart football season is approaching and you know exactly what that means. It means that we are both going to bet and bet a lot with our friends at my bookie. Yeah. My bookie is the best and premier Sportsbook used by us over here at Sleepers Media. They have everything you need, Greg. With football season approaching, there's nothing I love more than looking at a nice Saturday slate and even leading into a little bit of Sunday, dipping into the NFL. But there's no better place to do it than with my bookie. And I think we got a great offer for the folks over uh, at my bookie if they want to tap in with us. We sure as hell do. And I'm going to tell you all about that offer. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the great benefits of betting with my bookie. My bookie is safe, secure. Most importantly, when you win, you get paid quick. If the first two legs of your parlay hit, cash out early, use those funds on another bet or let it ride for a chance at a bigger payday. With football season coming, they're going to have a bunch of great things in store for you, whether you're looking to bet futures game lines, player props, all of it is available with our friends at MyBookie. And you can get a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. There's a link in this description, promo code SLEEPERS. With MyBookie, make sure you get that 50% deposit match. Use those funds. Maximize your chances of winning as football season gets here. And we'll be there with you every single step of the way. 